Hello there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In this episode, I wanna talk to you about my experience moving away from Adobe, trying out different alternatives, and kind of how happy I am about the whole situation. Am I happy? I'm, I'm, I don't know. Now, a few months ago, I did a video on why I don't use Adobe products anymore, in case you haven't saw that, and you're attacking me like, and what are you talking about? Adobe is the best thing that happened ever since Michael Jackson, Shamona. It's okay, calm down, relax, Mr. Michael. I don't mind Adobe, the big A, the big Apple, that's New York. Moving on. I don't mind the products. Adobe products are great. They are very future, future, feature packed, and they can get the job done, obviously. Professionals use Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, all of those good stuff to get your job done and creative fields. The products, are great. I've used them for years. They're perfect. Again, they're not perfect. They're great. But there's problems in other areas, such as having a subscription-based model. Again, I wouldn't have any issues with a subscription-based model as long as you can offer multiple choices to people. If you can offer a subscription-based and also straight up buying the whole product, I think that would be excellent. Right? just give more choices to the people and there are certain cases where i might just be interested in video features such as just premiere pro and after effects why don't you make a package with premiere and after effects kind of like the way you're doing for photoshop and lightroom i think that would be a great choice because you're kind of stuck of either getting the whole thing for like 60 bucks right or getting each individual app which is like 25 or 30 bucks so if i get the only the After Effects and Premiere Pro, I'm already at 60 bucks. So that's kind of the main problem. You either have to just get the whole package, I have a package for you, or you're kind of left in the dust. So let me get into a few alternatives and I'll tell you how happy or sad I am about them. Starting off with some of the best, and there's, there's two here. First is Affinity Designer, which is a replacement for Adobe Illustrator. Now my main issues with Illustrator, I've been using it for years, back in the day. My main issues with it is the UI. I never really got into it. I always found it difficult to find certain things and achieving certain things took way more, many more steps than it should have had. So I felt that I was absolutely uncreative and my workflow was pretty bad in it. And I was just slow. So in contrast, Affinity Designer, again, is kind of like a one paid thing. You pay once and you have it and it's not even expensive. They also have three months free trial right now. So if you want to just kind of check it out and have fun with it, you can. But the UI is way more cleaner. I mean, what can we say that this is an app that's made in 2013 or 14 or something like that in contrast to um, Adobe Illustrator, which was made right around the corner where Rome conquered the Vikings. Is that not a thing? My, my geography teacher used to get high, so this may not be accurate. But yeah, it's an old app. So obviously, uh, you know, it's kind of bloated. It's kind of the UI is not that nice, so it's more difficult to use. So that's one big advantage of Designer. Another big advantage is that you're gonna get a bunch of live update things. So when you pick out the color, you get to see live Whereas in Illustrator, you have to click OK before the color actually updates on the UI. To nitpick about certain things, yes, Adobe Illustrator is more feature packed than Designer. You have certain tools that are just not available yet, such as the Liquify tool. We don't have that in Designer. Uh, combining shapes, right? Um, you have the basics in Designer, uh, but again, Illustrator offers a few more. Also taking like an, a pixel-based image and converting it to a SVG, that's also lacking, unfortunately. But other than that, great UI, great experience so far, and a bunch of updates coming in Designer, which is great, and th those are free. So I'm very happy with, with this one. Next up is gonna be the last one, actually, that I'm super happy with, App, and after that, I'm not really happy anymore. So these are the two. So the second one is gonna be Capture One. And initially, when I tried the app, I didn't really like it that much. I thought it was kind of confusing. The UI was making me spin, literally. Um, but I learned to love it. So this is kind of an alternative to um, Lightroom. If you want to light up the room, watch my face as it gets darker. And then you light it up. 
We have the light room. Okay, let's stop that. Come on, light. Shine my face. Shine my lovely face. There we go. Okay. What was I talking about? So here, Lightroom and Capture One, both are great. No complaints on either. I love Lightroom. It's a great app. I love Capture One too. Again, kind of getting through that initial bump of getting used to how things work in Capture One was kind of tricky, but I actually don't have any complaints. Again, you can get Capture One just with a one-time payment, which is awesome. And to be honest, I have a Fuji camera and Capture One actually works a bit better. Again, kind of the feature set of both apps are almost identical, very uh, similar. Uh, but I feel like there is a bit of advantage to Capture One when it comes to Fujifilm or Sony. I think these two are gonna have a bit of advantage on Capture One. You can recover just a teeny tiny bit more detail, a shadow detail and highlight detail uh, with these cameras. And also there was a weird issue where if you try to sharpen an image, so if you try to sharpen a Fuji file, uh, you would get these weird ar artifacts in, in Lightroom, these wormy artifacts, and it would look very bad. I'll try to put up an image. As compared to Capture One, you would get a nice and clean file. But other, other than that, I like both apps, but Capture One wins, again, just because I'm working with a Fujifilm camera, and also because of the one-time payment. That my voice. <coughs> and here is where we arrive at the confusion land of me not knowing what's better and what's not. So here is my debating, I don't know which one is better and things that kind of make me want to switch back to Adobe. Starting off with Affinity Photo being an alternative to Photoshop. Photoshop. So Affinity Photo also has the nice UI of designer. So they are kind of the same when it comes to that. But I feel this one, the lack of features compared to Photoshop, it just is just too much. And, and not only that, certain things just don't work properly in Affinity Photo that annoys me a bunch. For example, when you import a picture and you wanna raise up the shadows, it kinda looks washed out. It doesn't look that great. Also, the raw engine that's built in, so if you wanna import a raw image into Affinity Photo, it just it just falls apart, it's, it's very bad. Whereas uh, Photoshop uses Lightroom's um, raw engine. And there's just certain things that are missing that I really don't like. If I, if you want to draw, you're going to have a better experience in Photoshop just because of all the tools for drawing that you're going to find out there. Also, maybe you want to do a content aware removal. Maybe you want to remove a person or something from your image. There's much more data that you can give to Photoshop. Photo Why do I keep on to say Photoshop? Photoshop. Okay. Photoshop. For example, I can mark uh, the person that I want to delete from my image, but I can also give data to Photoshop to basically what part of the image to use uh, to replace that person with. Whereas in Affinity Photo, you don't really have that option. You just kind of delete it and hope for the best. All right. So for example, maybe you have water and you want to remove a boat from the water. Well, you want to tell Photoshop, hey, only replace the boat with water. So you mark the whole water. You don't want to mark the sky and everything. So that's the problem. And, and Affinity Photo is kind of random. Maybe you get the sky, maybe you get the water. How about both? So yeah, that's kind of the main issue here is you do have some tools, but they're either limited or they don't exist. Um, you don't, you cannot import videos, you don't have a timeline that you can use, you don't have the mesh tool. Mesh tool, is that a tank? Mesh tool, I'll mesh your potatoes, bitch. So this kind of comes down to what do you need it for? Currently, I'm okay with it, but I'm, I, I think I might switch uh, because the main reason why I'm using it right now is to just create thumbnails and just kind of edit certain images just a bit. So for that, it's fine, but using it to its full extent, to create professional images or to like, do heavy editing, I think you can get away with it, but you might find yourself, again, I highly recommend you to just try it and see if you reach that limit of not being able to find the tools. Because again, right now I'm kind of okay with it because everything that I use it for, uh, I, I do have the tools for it. But if I arrive to a point where 
ah, there are certain things that I cannot do, I might do the Switch. Okay, Switch, Nintendo, sponsor of this episode. <laughs> Next up, Adobe XD versus Figma. This is, I don't care about this one. Ligma is the same as Adobe XD. Stop searching for comparisons on the internet. Go sleep. It's the same thing. And lastly, here is where is kind of the most confusing part for me when it comes to video editing. This is my main issue that drives me to switch back to Adobe. I have, I use DaVinci which was a great filmmaker back in the day. He used to be a singer, a porn star. Um, and he decided to make DaVinci Resolve, which is again, a video editing app. So he resolved everything. He made music. If you had any issues, you just call up DaVinci. He was like, I got you. I'll resolve the issue. So DaVinci Resolve is a great app. The main great thing about DaVinci Resolve is the color color features which means i can take this image because this is how the image actually looks like in its original form how i filmed this and i turn it into this wow amazing lovely okay so the color grading that you can do in davinci resolve is absolutely amazing it's one of the best things that it has other than that, the other great features about it is that everything is unified, which means if I want to do some audio work, then I can do it inside the app. If I want to do editing, I can do it inside the app. If I want to do some compositing, maybe remove a green screen from my back, I can do that in a fusion tab. That's what it's called. And the audio is the Fairlight. And yeah, you just have everything integrated. Whereas in the Adobe world, you can have everything separate. You have Premiere. If you want to do some motion graphics, you have After Effects. If you want to do audio, you have Audacity. I don't know what that was, but let's, let's move on. But yeah, you can do everything, which is super nice. So if I want to adjust the audio here and just raise it up, make it clearer for my singing voice. You all, my fire, my one. Ain't nothing but a heartbreak. So when it comes to editing, that's the only thing I like about DaVinci. I really like the color grading features. The rest is okay. Premiere Pro does have a bunch more awesome features inside. Uh, so let me give you a few examples here. The amount of tutorials you're gonna find on the internet for specific effects out there, it's gonna be way better in Premiere Pro. If you ever find, if you ever want to find a plugin that you can add, a third-party plugin that you want to add inside your video editing program, there's gonna be more in Premiere Pro versus DaVinci. Do you want to create a quick transition effect or maybe buy a transition effect? It's gonna be way simpler to implement that again in Premiere Pro versus DaVinci. Do you have some motion graphics that are editable? So maybe you drag in some text popping thing. And you can just easily edit it uh, to say your own name or your own social media thing. Those are most likely are going to be done in Adobe After Effects, which is going to integrate perfectly with Premiere Pro. Whereas on DaVinci Resolve side, you have something called Fusion, which is really not that great as a motion graphics creator thing, right? It's more of a compositing kind of thing. And to be honest, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of it um, compared to After Effects. So here's the problem. Tutorials are lacking on this side. All right, you're gonna find basic editing things and basic color grading things on DaVinci. That's perfectly fine. But when it comes to creating effects, transitions, text effects, things of that sort, it's heavily lacking. Also, the ease of just masking something in Premiere Pro is super nice. Sometimes you want to do just add some text on the screen. I want to do a pop up here. Um, you have these easing functions. So how smooth does the text come up to get this weird effect? Check it out, right? It just comes up like, like a normal speed. It's not that nice. Uh, so the easing, sometimes it just doesn't work on text. And again, the main problem I have here is Whenever I want to create some kind of motion graphics, I don't really have a choice on as an alternative to After Effects. Again, you do have Fusion, but things are so complex to make there for like a super simple thing. And sometimes you cannot even make it inside compared to After Effects. 
And again, the big, big issue is even if I can do it in Fusion, there's a heavy lack of tutorials out there. So where, where, where do I learn to create that effect? So I see myself actually moving back to Premiere Pro and After Effects, and then just, just do my color grading work on DaVinci. So I'll export that and then export it back. Once I'm done with color grading, finish up the video there, call it today. And the big issue here is that Adobe just does not offer a video centric package. Why don't you create a package with Premiere, After Effects and Audition? That would be lovely for like 20 bucks or 25, whatever. Just throw me a price and that would be great. But no, we only get Lightroom and Photoshop. Other than that, just get all the apps. But what if I don't need all the apps? Have you ever thought about that, Adobe? Let's actually put this to the test. Can I turn myself into some birds using DaVinci? There we go. That's gonna be it. That's kind of my thoughts behind it. The thing is, I'm planning on creating tutorials right now. And I'm kind of debating whatever I should make them using Affinity and DaVinci and things like that, or just jump into the Adobe Cloud again. So let me know. I'm gonna do tutorials on, again, like photo things and designer things like creating illustrations. Let me know what you're using. Let me know if you're using alternatives or you're using Adobe. And based on that, I'm gonna create some tutorials for you. All right, so let me know down in the comments what you're using, how happy you are with it, how unhappy you are with it, and don't do that ever again. What did I do? So thank you so much for watching and being here with me again. And until next time, I will see you deep in my eyes. I don't know what that means, but it's deep in my eyes. We should film like this. Look at that, we got the nice, nice bokeh balls in the background. This should be the thumbnail.